Here's the game plan. Today's college football, you know like I do, uh, you got to have depth. Agreed. We have that covered. Our experts go in depth with their scouting report of Wisconsin. And not to badger anyone, who do we talk to about this week's opponent? Good call. Barry Alvarez, last 30 plus years in Madison, talks about his role with the Big Ten and playing at Camp Randall. We could use someone to show us around town. Let's bring in Wisconsin's recruiting ringer. It was like three in the morning and I took him to two pizza joints. He's like, I love it here. I'm committing tomorrow. And I was like, I was like, got him. Depth, scouting, expert, tour guide. Sounds like we're ready to go for Nittany Game Week. Welcome to Nittany Game Week. I'm Todd Sadowski along with former Nittany Lion coaches Jake Paterno and Tom Bradley. Game Week, fellas. We made it. 12 of the next 13 Saturdays, there is Penn State football. Finally. <laughs> and fans in the stands and noise and, you know, people are excited. But, you know, I'm not sure how excited Penn State will be to have Camp Randall full on Saturday. You know, see, we were talking about that. And I enjoy, the, I enjoy being away for the first game. Because it's total focus, you know, no distraction with tickets and all different family coming and doing that, and it's just all football. So I'm a guy that likes to play away in the opening game. Well, they got a challenge ahead of them, that is for sure. So much to do, so little time before opening kickoff. Let's get things set up in our opening drive. The season will bring highs and lows, ups and downs. The guys who set the tone and lead in good times and bad are the captains and they've been named for the 2021 campaign. Here's the list. Five of the six players selected by the team are seniors, including both safeties, Jaquan Brisker and Jonathan Sutherland. Also nice, also, also nice to have some experience at the back end of the secondary. Quarterback Sean Clifford, special teams represented by kicker punter Jordan Stout and junior offensive lineman Rasheed Walker. Sutherland and Clifford become the first three-time captains in school history. So, Tom, you were a captain on the 78 team. Give us an idea how important good captains are to the success of the team? Well, a lot of times, one of the things that's very important, if the coaches can't handle it, the captain's got to be able to handle it. And if they can't, they have to take the responsibility to go to the coach and sit down and talk to them if there are any problems. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of less captains and more, but, you know, every team is different, and hopefully this works out. And, you know, George Stout is the special teams captain, but you hope he never sets foot on the field in a game, <laughs> but obviously he will. And he's been, he's been a consistent performer, so he certainly earned it. Yeah, they got the offense, special teams, and defense all represented. Okay, the last time the Nittany Lions started the year with a ranked opponent, 20 years ago against Miami, it does not happen often. The Badgers begin the season ranked 12th, Penn State 19th in the country. Sure is nice to be back in a normal routine, and the team expects to rotate a lot of the bodies onto the field at Camp Randall. We didn't have a spring ball last year. Uh, we're more comfortable with each other. Uh, I think we have a lot more trust in each other, so I think it's going to be a lot of great things this year. In today's college football, you know, like I do, uh, you got to have depth. And, you know, we have a next man up mentality. You know, he goes out for three plays and there's no drop off. The next guy's just as good and you keep hitting the O-line and waves. So I think our guys understand that. They embrace that. So there's two guys playing a big role right now. Strange steps into the starters role at tight end with Pat Fryermuth now on the Steelers. Coach Scott. Lining up the commits at defensive line to give them much needed depth. He's going to have to come up with ways to get pressure on Wisconsin's quarterback, Graham Mertz, guys. No question, and I think that's going to be a big factor for both sides, but certainly getting to Graham Mertz, who is a, a talented quarterback, confident as can be, and that you got to get, try and rattle him early on. Well, that's the thing. you got to get him off schedule. If they can play that game, you know, first and ten, second and five, you know, third and three or two, you, you want to put them backwards, and get them in long yardage situations. Yeah, don't sleep on Mertz. The guy was a highly ranked recruit. On the offensive side of the ball, Penn State's learning a new system under OC Mike Yursich for Wisconsin. Makes it tough to prep for the Lions. They're not sure what they'll see, so they are covering their bases and studying everything possible to be ready. Especially when you study in uh, film, because when you watch the offense uh, from last year, you got to take it with a grain of salt um, because, you know, it's a whole new OC. So, uh, you know, we've been watching uh, Texas uh, offensive film, um, even taking that with a grain of salt because you don't know, you know, what he's going to bring over and whatnot. So it, it does make it a little, more, a little bit more difficult. 
And what makes it really hard on defense is a good running quarterback. I'm really interested to see how often Clifford tucks it under and runs. Not much experience behind him with Will Levis in Kentucky. You need to keep him healthy. You need to have him running, though, for effective offense. We'll see how Coach Yersich utilizes him in the run game. Well, the interesting thing, that, you know, one of the things you're getting ready for a scheme you, wrote, you haven't seen or you're kind of uncertain on, you still come down to fundamentals. You've got to be able to tackle, you get off of blocks, you've got angles, pursuit. So it's going to come down to a lot of that anyway. No matter how much you scheme, you've still got to be able to do the basic fundamentals to win on defense. Yeah, a lot of it. Go and ahead, if you, and if you look at, at Texas' offense, Sam Ellinger carried the ball a lot. And I'm not sure, given the depth of Penn State does not have a quarterback, I'm not sure you're going to see quite that many carries for Sean Clifford. Something to look for, that's yeah. for sure. A lot of interesting matchups in this one. Could be decided in the trenches. That's where we go to discuss this week's scrap metal. <laughs> So they're the unsung heroes every year. The offensive linemen, there is no running game, no pass protection without these guys clearing the path, Tom. Well, last year the offensive line was disappointing, and they, and they know, you know they gave up 28 sacks. They're 104th in the country. And I'm glad they, Rasheed Walker got elected captain. He'll take those guys under his belt. If they, they've got to be able to protect Paul Cliver. They know they, they don't have the depth of quarterback that they want to have, okay? So one of the big things is going to be, hey, let's make sure we secure this pocket so we can keep him clean. And they, you know, they've got a good line coming back. They've got three starters coming back. And I'm going to tell you, they don't get a lot of the hype and you don't hear their names a lot. But if this team's going to roll, they're going to have a lot to do with it. And next week's scrap metal will be for a performance on the field. Can't wait for that. Up next, our scouting report, Coach Bradley. Coach Paterno dissect the Badgers on both sides of the ball. What you should be looking for when you watch the Nittany Lions take on Wisconsin at Camp Randall. You're watching Nittany Game Week. Tom Bradley Scrap Metal is sponsored by Team DUI, creating a safer and healthier environment for everyone in the Commonwealth. Scouting Report is sponsored by Penn State Health, giving you the care you want where you want it. Visit PennStateHealth.org to find a provider near you. We are back on the Nittany Game Week. Big Ten opener on the road. Very tough place to play. Camp Randall Stadium. The crowd will be electric and firmly behind their 12th ranked Badgers. Coach Bradley, Coach Paterno, scout this one out. What can the Nittany Lions do to come away with a victory in this one? Well, Todd, a lot of things, but let's talk specifically. You know, the scout report segment, the thing we want to do here is treat this just like you are players sitting in a meeting room, and we come in on that Sunday. We show you a couple of key plays, a couple of base things that are going to be the real keys to wins and losses. So we're going to start with Tom and talk a little bit about the offense of, that you're going to see in Wisconsin. And when you look at this first play, Tom, this is kind of a power scheme. Uh, you a lot of pulling the backside guard. Uh, talk a little about what we're going to see on that. Well, one of the great things about Wisconsin, we talked about it earlier in the show, they're first in the country in time of possession. 36 minutes and 45 seconds. They know how to run this football, okay? This is one of their favorite plays right here, these power schemes, down, down, kick out. The guard's going to make a decision. The back's going to read off of the guard, and they're just looking for some push, and they're hoping for five yards. Good. Let's talk a little bit more about what they do now when they get into some of their three wide-out sets and they get into some zone-type schemes. Uh, take a look at this next one as we pull this up. You're going to see, again, an outside zone running back is going to stretch this thing and then plant his foot and get north and south. Tom, talk about the problems that presents for your defense. Well, first of all, they're going to stretch the defense. His aiming point's going to be right off the side of that tackle, and from there he's going to see what he has plant his foot and go. It's a one-cut move. Okay, they're just looking for some push, some stretch, and it gobbles up a lot of the zone pressures, you know, that people are trying to bring. People are moving and slant, and it, and it eats a lot of it up. So the one thing that kills these plays is penetration, and if you're moving sideways, it's not a good thing against these. No question. And now, once they get you stacked up against the run, now they're going to get their, their one of their top players, Ferguson, the tight end, involved in the game. Here's one as a tight end screen. Tom, talk us through this one as we look at this. Well, one of the things that what they try to do here is a lot of times people are running these fire zones nowadays, and if you're not snugging up to who your guy is, these tight end screens can be very dangerous. They get the prep down the field. People are running with different people. All of a sudden, now the guy leaks out to get the screen, which is a big part of their game. Their tight end is going to be one of the best players on the field come Saturday. No question. And after all that, now they're going to throw some play action oh. pass stuff at you, Tom. Talk about this one. Oh. Once they get you on the run, you're inching up, inching up, cheating up, cheating up. 
Then all of a sudden, here it comes, you know, the motion down a little bit, bring the drag across, get the clear outs, and here comes the back out in the flat. And if your eyes aren't right, if you have dirty eyes, as they say, you're going to have problems here. So it's very important that you maintain your, your eyes at all times during when you're playing Wisconsin. Now, I'm going to take a little bit here to talk about their defense. So let's start with this first one, talk about their basic defensive front. There are three down linemen front, and as you pull into this, their safety. So as you're watching the game at home, watch the safety play. They're going to tip off where the blitzes and pressures are coming from. So that's going to be something Penn State's going to have to handle. Now, once you get into that, we get to our next slide here. We'll talk about some of the things that they do with their man coverage. So we pull this up and take, a, take us closer in on this. They're going to put their, their number one is their corner. They're going to put him uh, on the best receiver most of the time. A lot of edge blitzes. Number nine's an out as a strong safety. He's going to be blitzing a bunch. Watch number 19 off the edge, man blitz behind it. And then when you get to third downs, we'll take a look at our next slide here. When you get into your third downs, they're going to bring their nickel, nickel people in the game. And one of the matchups you want to look for is who is on Dotson. When they get in a man, what are they going to do? Because they're going to blitz, they're going to pressure. Because they're only three down guys, they can blitz linebackers and still only be four-man rush. The linebackers will key the running back, and their top corner will usually match the best receiver. So number one for Wisconsin on Dotson might be a key matchup to watch when you're sitting home. And with that safety back deep, uh, he's always around to help. But going to be a big challenge for Penn State's offense. We're back on Nittany Game Week, time for our impact interview, and we're fortunate to have some time with a guy who spent the past three decades plus as the Wisconsin head coach and then athletic director, now a special advisor to the Big Ten Conference, Barry Alvarez joins us. And Barry, our viewer question actually is about your Big Ten role. We call this our impact interview. Michael Boyer wants to know, first, congrats on the new role with the Big Ten. And we'll start there. What's to know about that advisory position and about expansion and what you've been talking about with Kevin Warren and the conference? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, when Texas and Oklahoma made the move to go announce that they're going into the South uh, Southeast Conference, you know, naturally there was a, a a lot of talk around. You know, we as a as a group discussed it. Does any is there anyone out there that makes sense? Um, you know, we made the announcement what we're going to do. We really uh, hadn't had a lot of discussion about expansion. You know, there you have to have someone that fits. It has to make sense uh, before you make that move or go in that direction. And there was no particular school that, that made sense. But uh, joining an, an alliance with the other two conferences, as we announced it, uh, the ACC and the Pac-12, uh, you know, with some you know, the like likenesses uh, as far as philosophy, types of schools, um, potential scheduling, et cetera, really made a lot of sense. So uh, that, that's where we are right now. Uh, there's a lot of potential on what we can do with that alliance. Hey, Barry, Jay Paterno here. Uh, I want to shift gears really to the game this week. Um, as we've looked at film of Wisconsin from last year, uh, there's a, a special guy, that, number 84, Jake Ferguson, who really jumps out at me. Um, and obviously, for people who don't know at home, he's your grandson. Talk a little about about him and what he brings to that offense. Uh, and if you want to talk about the offense in general as well, go ahead and do that. Yeah, you know what? I'm really proud of Jake. Um, you know, I think he's grown every year as far as being a complete tight end. Uh, he could always catch the ball. You know, if you sit in my box, he's open every play. <laughs> you know, so every time there's a pass play, he's open. Um, so, uh, but, but he's becoming a complete tight end. He, he blocks. He likes to block. He can, he can match up physically. Um, uh, and he, I think he's a tough matchup. You know, he can run faster than linebackers in most cases. Uh, he, he's, you know, a good size for a tight end. He's 6'5 plus and 245 or 245 plus in that range. And so he, he's a tough matchup, and he's, he's got good hands. He's played well for three years now for us. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward. He feel like feels like he's in the best shape he's been in his entire career. He's much stronger. Uh, I, I think he's taken things a, a lot more serious going into this year. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to his senior year. 
Hey, hey, Barry, Tom Bradley here. Uh, my question is one that came from a lot of your friends in Burgettstown. When I told them we were <laughs> going to have you on the show, and it's kind of a, it's obviously not a football question, but they want to know, do you ever go to DJ Barbecue in Weirton, West Virginia? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's one of my first stops. I know my <laughs> brother's there once a week. My brother takes his family there once a week. Yeah, that's DJ in Weirton. That's not very far from Burgettstown. About 10 minutes, right? That's right. <laughs> well, Coach is, Coach is always good for a few hard-hitting questions there. He wants to know about the hometowns and all that good stuff. But, Coach, I want to talk about your, the style of play at Wisconsin, how it meshes with Penn State. You know, there isn't necessarily a feature back coming back this year, but there always seems to be that big back that you establish that style for Wisconsin and how much that, that community, just the state, how much they love that part of it and just how difficult Camp Randall makes it on opponents. Well, you know, I devised this style. You know, when I took the job, I played against them. I knew the Big Ten. Uh, the thing we had to do when I took the job was keep our best players at home. You know, I had the top two kids in the state already committed to Notre Dame. I looked at Iowa, who had gone to the Rose Bowl that year. Eleven in their two deep were, were from Wisconsin. Notre, uh, Michigan was taking some of the top players. So I knew if I could keep the best players in state, we could compete with anyone. And most of those guys are going to be linemen. There are some of the biggest Palookas you have ever seen in your life in the state of Wisconsin. I saw that my first year at a summer camp. You know, we got 14-year-olds that are 6'6", six, six, you know, 250, and can bend and move, and, you know, they just didn't know a lot about football. So I, I felt like, you know, we, we could always get good linemen, offense and defensive linemen. Uh, we can go out and find backs. But we've had, we've had a few really good ones come out of the state. The Melvin Gordon, Gordons, Melvin, uh, uh, or Melvin Gordon, uh, uh, Michael Bennett, guys like that, Brett Moss, you know, those are all great players, first round picks. And, uh, but for the most part, we're, we're going to go east to someplace, in the east coast to find our backs and, and, uh, and, and a lot of our skilled players. And uh, just be good fundamentally, not, you know, we're not going to out finesse people, but we're going to be good fundamentally. We don't want to beat ourselves. Uh, we want to be physical. I, I felt like if I, when we got into the league, or when I took the job to win the league, you had to beat Ohio State and Michigan. And the only way we could beat them, we're not going to out recruit them, but we had to be as good as them or better fundamentally. And we had to be tougher. And so we devised, you know, that the style of play that we have. It's going to be ball, ball control field position, um, you know, just kind of football that I learned when I grew up. Hey, you know, Barry, thanks. So, Barry, stick around with us, if you would, for just a few minutes. We're going to step aside just for the TV show part of this to take a break, but we're going to continue our interview with you uh, on the web so that if you'd like to see the entire conversation with one of the most successful people in the college football world, make sure to go to NittanyGameWeek.com to watch the interview along with our web exclusive. Heading into the final minutes of the show, you have both been in the unique position of influencing young players on and off the field. Not sure how long the branches are, but you definitely have a high school football coaching tree. The most recent member is former Nittany Lions defensive lineman Jordan Hill. He won his debut with Trinity High School in Central PA, and we caught up with Jordan. The scrap man, it, he is dialed in at all times, all, the, all day, every day. You know, from my first day on campus, you knew who he was going to be every single day. All right, there'd be times in the hallway, he'd walk by, you say, what's up, coach? He'd just give you a quick wave and keep going because he's thinking. And he's in the same thing, how I'm getting now, he's dialed in. He's thinking about situational football. He's thinking about down and distance. He's thinking about putting players in certain situations to win. Jay was always a guy, he wore his emotion on his sleeve. So, you know, sometimes there'd be battles between players and, and coaches. You know, sometimes it'd be Jay and another guy. Uh, just going back and forth. It was all friendly, but we were all getting better. Um, but again, it was for me being a defensive guy, we used to love it. So Jordan is undefeated in his one game career so far, which may not sound impressive, but the Shamrocks hadn't won a game in two years and their numbers have jumped since Jordan 
took over the program. There you go, guys. Your coaching tree, Jordan Hill. <laughs> and, a, and a class, well, really a class individual, no question. I think he's going to be great for that school. Pretty proud of him, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. He's a great, was a wonderful person, a great guy to coach. All right. See, I love surprising you guys with this stuff. That was I, didn't, I didn't tell that you we had that. Surprise. No, you didn't. All right. Good stuff. No way we can squeeze everything in for the TV show. We have a lot to share with you when it comes to college football. So make sure you check out NittanyGameWeek.com for web-exclusive content. All right, so we finish the same way every week with you, the viewers, and your pride picks. Show us your spirit and submit them on the website. For Jay and Tom, I'm Todd. Thanks so much for watching Nittany Game Week. We'll see you next time.